Welcome to this edition of Journeys. I'm your host, Gleaves Whitney. During the quarantine, we may not be able to journey beyond our homes, but that should not stop us from journeying beyond our minds. Today, let's explore the noble but difficult efforts in our democracy to find common ground for the common good. Are we the people any longer capable of fulfilling the charge in our Constitution to form a more perfect union? I've written a lengthy essay in response to this question, available at gvsu.edu slash hc. Here's my one minute recap of the main idea. In these hyper-partisan times, we must never forget that what unites us as human beings and as Americans is far more important than what divides us as Democrats and Republicans. But do we really believe that anymore? We certainly don't act like it. The words we use to describe our feelings toward the other are pretty disturbing, and they don't just have to do with race, ethnicity, or gender. Words like hate, contempt, and scorn also describe what people feel toward those who think and vote differently from the way they do. If people are Trump supporters, if their basic operating system is conservative, then alas, many of them hate progressives. If people are Sanders supporters, say, and if their basic operating system is progressive, then unfortunately, many of them hate conservatives. Well, that's as fundamental a divide as any. Surveys show that about 30% of Americans self-identify with the right and about 30% with the left. If true, then the majority of Americans, 60%, feel a visceral dislike toward a lot of fellow Americans. Given that level of dislike, I ask three questions. First, where does this hatred toward fellow Americans come from? Perhaps if we diagnose the origins of the disease, we can find a palliative, if not the cure, to deal with the symptoms. It turns out our nation's founders understood the sources of hatred and recommended some, some good ways to reduce the severity of the sickness. Second, how is this supposed to work, this radical experiment in democracy, if we presume that half our fellow Americans are so evil we shouldn't even talk to them. Democracy is made for talkers. It requires institutions that encourage us to talk to one another, talk through our problems. What an innocent pleasure, a poignant lesson we appreciate more than ever as we endure the coronavirus pandemic with its social distancing and psychological alienation. Third, how can our nation's fragile consensus during the COVID-19 pandemic carry forward after the medical problem is solved? Odds are, it won't. As the nation's physical health returns, as its economic strength resumes, so will its tribal hatreds resurface. Hatred is the solvent of our civic sinews. Hatred is the spiritual pandemic we must fight because in the long run, hatred will do a lot more damage to our nation than the coronavirus ever will. Thanks for watching.